Welcome to Twilight Render. This is Fletch, and we're going to talk today about background sky, background images, sky environment in Twilight Render. Specifically, someone on the forum asked about matching your background to the uh, image and your rendering. So let's open up Exploration Render, open up Edit Environment, and we're going to choose uh, different types of skies and show you what they do. There are two sections basically in the sky types. There are backgrounds and there are skies. The background images don't contribute light to your scene and the skies do. So if you want your lighting to come from the background image, you need to use it in one of these sky slots. If you use one of these backgrounds uh, choices, you will not get any light or reflections from those images. Here I've popped in the HDR Studio, which comes with Twilight Render now. And uh, let's set the brightness back to one. I had it set low. And here you can see in the Exploration Render that it is contributing to the reflections on these uh, reflective surfaces, such as the water and the glass. But if I were to change it to be uh, sky color, uh, for instance, um, and here I have sky color set to black, it won't contribute any light because obviously it's black, but let's change it to something else. Uh, let's change it to this turquoise color, light blue. And now you can see even the uh, sky is contributing to the water and the reflections in that blue color. So sky color actually contributes lighting, but if we change it to background color, it will only show that in the background and it will not contribute to light or reflections. So there's a massive difference between the two. This applies to when you're using background images. If you set your background to centered image or fit image or tiled image, these won't contribute lighting to your scene. Let's try out background centered image right now and let's choose a sky. Here I'm going to use a high res background sky. We're going to pop it in here. And now this sky will show up, but it's set to be centered image. So it's actually just um, taking the resolution of your scene or your rendering and centering that from some central point on the image. And that's what you're going to see of your image. It's not going to show the whole image. Here, fit to view proportions checked. And here I have fit to SketchUp checked. So therefore, um, whatever view proportions I have set up here in my viewing window in SketchUp itself, that is determining the aspect ratio of the rendering. If I uncheck this, now the aspect ratio will be determined by whatever shape or proportion that I've chosen in this view. If I squish it down or change it up high, uh, it's going to change the amount of pixels chosen from your background image to show in this view. It's just going to center that picture in the rendering. So let's choose to start the rendering and we are going to set our image to be a square, 400 by 400. I don't have fit to view proportions checked. Now when I hit play, it will render this as a perfect square, but it's going to choose the pixels from the background image that were in a square in the background. Uh, it's starting out in the dead center of the image. It, it will not um, show the full image. It's only going to show 400 pixels square from that background image. Let's uh, stop this rendering here. And start this one and here you can see it's only choosing some some small portion of that high-res image that i've inserted in the background i hope that's clear to you again i'm using this high resolution sky i can show you what the sky uh, this high resolution tree line looks in the background and you can see that this view proportion is 400 pixels by 400 pixels and it's only choosing the square out of the middle of this image. It's choosing somewhere up here above the clouds to down to where, well, where this rock is right here. That's the only little bit that it's showing 
and it's showing a perfect square to match the image resolution I've chosen. That's what centered image does. But if I choose fit image, fit image will try to squeeze that whole image down into whatever proportions I've chosen for my rendering. So if we hit play again, it's going to squeeze the entire image, all the pixels down into this size that I've chosen right here, 400 by 400. And here you can see that it's squeezed all those pixels down into 400 by 400. So what does this mean for us? This means that if we want to match this picture, we need to set a view size, a rendering size that matches exactly to that image. So what I need to type in is the resolution of the original background image I want to match. It's best if I render to that exact image. So let's look at this picture and we see that it is a resolution of 3773 by 2002. So now we'll come here. We'll type those numbers right in here, 3773 by 2002. And now we can use this half render size button to shrink down the image for rendering real quickly, but it keeps the aspect ratio, which is critical to fitting that image into the rendering. So now when we render, it will squeeze all the pixels down into that render size, but keep the aspect ratio that we need. Okay, so the image was having trouble updating because it's actually rendering so fast that the update view can't even keep up with it. So there's no geometry in the scene. It's only rendering the background image. But here you can see, because the aspect ratio matches, now the image matches aspect ratio and resolution uh, is up to me now. But this is with the background fit image, keeping in mind that it's still not contributing light or reflections to the scene. But now the rendering is matching my image. So let's go in. We're going to unhide this geometry. Let's render this image with um, this fit image. Actually, we're going to want to render with the render dialog because we want to match this proportion exactly. Um, if I was using the exploration render, I wouldn't be able to match the exact proportions that I need. So now I'm going to render this with the geometry on, and you can see there's no lighting, no reflections in the scene, but uh, the full background image is in place. So what can we do here? How are we going to match this uh, geometry to fit inside of the background image? Well, SketchUp has a feature that is perfect for that. It's called Photo Match. So we're going to use the Photo Match feature. I'll go to File, Import, Image Types, set to New Matched Photo, Import the Image, and now we can match our horizon line using these tools. So first we can do is we can just grab the horizon line and set it to the right height. We want to match this up to where we think the background image has its horizon line. And we can move the, all the geometry with this handle. So we grab the horizon line and set it right about where we think it should be in the photo. So now I need to grab one of these vanishing points and try to put it exactly where it needs to be. It actually probably needs to be further over than I can reach right here. But just for quick reference, I mean, you understand how to do photo matching probably. Just uh, set your vanishing points that, so that you think they match your background image. And place your geometry exactly where it needs to be. And choose Done. And now when I click this scene, it will match the background image that I'm trying to match. If I were to try to do it here, you can see the difference. Uh, the perspective has completely changed, but now the image should match. Um, the geometry that I'm trying to render should match the background image. If I click on this view tool, it'll show me what the actual rendering is going to look like. And you can see how that matches uh, this camera match. So let's render this image now using uh, camera matching. And let's see how that works with the background image. Okay, so now we're going to render this image to match with the photo matching, and let's see how this model fits into the background. Remember that we have to enable the sun, 
because the background image is not contributing any lighting at all. I'll set the sun to 10% hazy. I'm going to change my multi-threading settings. I'm going to change the multi-threading to use only 11 out of my 12 threads. Because I am also recording this video, I need a little bit of power to work. But here you can see the lighting being contributed by the sun. And now the geometry seems to match the photo much better. But uh, clearly it's nighttime in my rendering and I need to change the time of day. We'll set the time of day to be just before noon and sometime in August. Should have a nice strong sun to match the background image. I'll try again here. Okay, that's much better. But as you can see, there are no reflections from this background sky in the glass. Um, the background sky isn't contributing any lighting to the scene, so the shadows are extra dark. Um, but in general, at least the image now matches the rendering. The, backgrounds, uh, the background image and the foreground geometry are aligning properly. I could tweak this uh, perspective a little bit better, but you get the picture on how to photo match. So there are plenty of tutorials out there for that. Now, I would suggest, however, instead of background fit image, I mean, sometimes you're going to need it, but what you'll want to do is use a background sky, a spherical sky instead, because um, the fact that it's not contributing any light to the scene, uh, it's not contributing to the reflections, it definitely doesn't look very realistic to me. So let's choose a background spherical sky. Here we're going to use the clear blue sky right here. And notice that when you create your spherical sky, where you put the horizon line is absolutely critical. Wherever your horizon line is there is where your horizon line is going to show up in your rendering. So um, assuming that your uh, camera is level to the ground in SketchUp. So when you take this image and you want to raise or lower uh, the horizon line, you can't do that in Twilight or SketchUp. What you have to do is open that in Photoshop or some other photo editor. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. Here we can uh, copy this background and then we just slide this image up or down depending how you want it. And that moves the horizon line of your image. In this case, uh, now the horizon line would be in the middle of the sky. So when I made a rendering, and I'll show you where the horizon line is. There it is. So the horizon line now would be going from being in the middle of the lawn right there, right below the trees to way up high in the sky. And this is really important to know. So when I'm rendering now, you only see a small portion of your scene. You don't see the top or the bottom. You only see the main middle portion of this image. Typically in most architectural renderings, you wouldn't see anything more than that. And since you're only rendering a small portion of that sky, your rendered image might look a little something like this. But since the horizon line is now much higher, instead of catching this much of the image, I would actually be catching this much of the image. So I'd barely see the top of the trees in that final rendering. So if I wanted to see more trees, I would actually need to move this up to put the horizon line further down. And now when I render this image, it'll probably catch something similar to this. So the trees would be right near the top of my image and all the rest of the foreground would be grass. So keep this in mind when you create your spherical skies, this camera height is determined by the horizon line of the image. This can't be moved up and down inside of SketchUp or Twilight, um, but you can always change it in SketchUp. I mean, in Photoshop if you need. Okay, so we've loaded this tree line sky in the background now. Let's see how that looks in here. It should, um, the horizon of the background sky will be different because we changed in this photo matching the height of the horizon. But we need to set this to spherical sky. I had it set back to background. That's clearly wrong. So let's try again. Now let it set to spherical sky and not background fit image. 
Let's see how it looks. Um, you'll see that the reflections will change and the whole lighting contribution will change. And now you can see that you're only seeing a small portion of that full background image since it's a spherical sky and the horizon is set as it was in the original image. Uh, it's not necessarily lining up properly with the background uh, for this particular view. So always keep in mind that your background image horizon line must match up with the horizon line of your rendering. Use photo matching to match with a background image. Use background fit image and set your view proportions properly. And do not use fit to view proportions in uh, the rendered window so that you're not uh, kind of tripping yourself up with that. And this is uh, really important to get these reflections and the lighting. Use spherical skies and not just background images. But background images have their place in certain artistic uh, renderings. So please keep in mind these skies will contribute lighting. The backgrounds will not contribute lighting or reflections to your scene. So please uh, feel free to ask more questions and we will see you on the forums.